<laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Awakening to Your Story TV, the place to learn, get excited, feel supported. Um, I cannot even believe that I did that whole live. Um, I even had people watching and there was no audio. <laughs> Ah, heart-centered solutions. Um, we are talking today about heart-centered solutions to improve your life. Um, so funny. Um, we just did a 30-minute live that um, the audio cut out on halfway through. So I'm hoping this one goes better and um, that we can get this information across in one place. <laughs> and um, so that you can have it. I am Alicia Hartzell. The beginning of this video is nothing um, like the first one, not nearly as elegant, but hey, we're all human and we're all trying. So today we're going to talk about what to do when someone treats you badly. And um, this has been up for a lot of people lately. I um, am getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts, a lot of questions about what to do when someone does something that cuts you to the core or that disappoints you or that frustrates you or that has a negative impact on you. And um, I decided that this would be a perfect time to talk about it. Um, I actually schedule the content that I'm going to the um, content I'm going to give you weeks and weeks and weeks ahead of time. And when it came across that this was going to be the content, I was like, oh my gosh, what perfect harmony with what people need <laughs> right now. So I think we are in a sort of pressure cooker of an environment as a collective culture. And I think that in that pressure cooker environment, often we find ourselves surviving more than we did before. And in that survival or that place of survival or that essence of survival, often our capacity gets limited. And in that limited capacity, we bump up against each other's stuff so much. And so I want to make sure that you have some tools for yourself when something like this happens, because I, like anyone else, knows how hard it can be to stop that spiral thinking when someone does something bad to you, or when you've been mistreated by someone, or have a negative experience with someone, right? So today we're going to talk about four steps that you can take to focus where you have power, because Focusing on them is never going to gift you your power. Here's, here's what happens. So they do something that bumps up against you. You perceive it as negative. They may or may not even recognize that they're doing it because of their survival or their capacity. But you're perceiving it as negative and it sets your amygdala on fire, right? You are revved and ready to go. And that amygdala that amygdala wants to validate the suffering. It wants to keep you linked in. It wants to prove that they were wrong. And here's the tricky part. Whether you feel yourself trying to be validated for, their, for the, your suffering, their wrongness in the moment with them, or you go and you talk to friends or you get rubbed up with other people about it, and you're not solution oriented, but you're just dumping and you're playing that tape recorder in your mind over and over again about how wrong they are. The problem with that is that no matter how much you focus on their wrongness, no matter how many times you try to validate how wrong they are, it's never going to right the wrong they caused you. And not only is it never going to wrong the right they caused you, it's going to keep you linked to that suffering. It's going to keep you 
plugged right in to their action. And you are going to be dragging them and that pain along with you into a million different scenarios, right? So if you can, instead of focusing on them, focus where you have power, then you're going to give yourself some freedom. You're going to create some space. You're going to be um, able to find those heart-centered solutions and create more openness within your experience, right? So we're going to talk about four different steps that you can take where you can focus on your power. The first step um, is the power to shift your perspective, right? So when you're focused on them and how wrong they are and that amygdala is just going, 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 you're being washed with hormones and adrenaline. Your heart races, um, your, you've got adrenaline pumping through you. Your, you can feel that elevated experience. So when you do this, when you shift from them to you, when you bring that focus back to your own heart, to your own story, and you, you understand that you are you and you are in your moment, in doing that, you're starting to unplug from them, right? So when you shift your perspective back to your own heart, the best way to do this is to give yourself a way to slow down, to kind of come down from that adrenaline rush, to kind of come down from that heart beating so fast. Meditation is a great way to do this. Now, I get that meditation isn't for everybody. The meditation I'm talking about doesn't have to be a 20-minute sacred meditation. This is a, a moment in time where you allow yourself the space to slow down your brain, to slow down your biological and physical and chemical response. So meditating can also be going out and taking a walk and looking at all the trees and looking at all the flowers or looking at whatever brings you joy. That can be a meditative experience. Stopping and smelling a flower and just being present and mindful with that flower can be meditative, right? Um, square breathing is wonderful, right? You hold, you breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, and then hold for four. That's called square breathing, and it's really helpful. I just took a class this morning with Goldie Hawn and her Mind Up program, and she recommended breathing in for three through the left nostril and then exhaling for three through the right nostril and doing that as many times as you can. And it slows everything down, kind of gives you a reset. Another great way to shift that perspective to your own heart and um, hold it there is to do some of those optimism practices that we talked about last week. I'll make sure to link in to the comments of this video below um, the video so that you, if you need some more time there, you can have it. But as a kind of a recap, those optimism practices are gratitude journal. So going back through and reading that the gratitude journal that you have, if you don't have a gratitude practice, just stop and sit and write about what you're grateful for. If you can take it down even deeper from a written thing that you're writing to an experience. So make sure you're describing it in a tactile way so that it becomes an experience as you write it and you read it. Then you can also do um, positive cellular memories is another practice. So having a bank of positive cellular memories, actually. So positive cellular memory bank where you write everything down um, and then you can go back. And those are the moments that are so positive that you can feel them in every cell of your being, right? So you can go back and read through the, one of those and get back into your story, get back into your heart, utilizing one of those things. The third one was um, divine wings of love. So those are the symbols that you use to feel connected to that divine space. God, the divinity, 
your angels, your ancestors, your guides, whatever language you have for that divine space, you ask for the help and connection. And then they gift you those signs and symbols to show you that you're kind of on track. All of those things, plugging into any of those things will help you shift that perspective back to your own heart, back to your own story, right? It slows everything down. And remember, you, it doesn't matter how many times you have to do this because <laughs> calming that amygdala down and pulling out of an old pattern of thinking of um, what they did was wrong to you, it takes time. So if you have to do it a thousand times, it's fine. Just keep unplugging, keep shifting that perspective and holding that space for yourself. Now two is the power to determine who you are. I also did a video about this a few weeks ago that I'll link into the comments, but this is really a missed opportunity. So often it feels like it should be something that is like, well, of course you get to determine who you are. But what we forget is that in these moments where we are attached to someone else's um, wrongness that they've done to us, we tend to adopt these parts within us that end up making us feel like we aren't who we are. And their actions start to determine how we feel and how we show up and how we move through the world. That experience that you had with them may make you feel really bitter. And if you hold on to that bitterness for too long, it morphs through your life. And then that experience is a filter on who you are. And it is not who you really want to be. It isn't who you would really want to choose, right? If you feel like you're a victim to somebody, right? To what they've done to you or how badly they've treated you. You may from your gut say, I am not a victim. But when you slow down and you think about it, you're like, oh, crap, I've been acting like a victim. And here's the thing. The more you... The more time you spend thinking in those spaces, the more time you spend really feeling those feelings, the more you adopt them. So what I would suggest in this step is to put your curiosity cap on and just start to be curious about how you're feeling and start thinking in the opposite direction. So if you feel bitter, well, what's the opposite of bitter? What, what would you rather feel? Well, the opposite of bitterness is sweetness and joy and happiness and a space of possibility. That's more aligned with who you truly are. If you could determine who you were, that's who you'd want to be. So start thinking about that more, right? And if you feel like you're a victim, if that's something that keeps fil filtering through your mind, what's the opposite of feeling like a victim, right? It would be feeling like you're grounded in who you are, feeling like you're resilient, feeling like you're powerful, feeling like you know what is right to you. All those things are way better to think about, but they are on the side of you, not on the side of what the other person did and them. So if you stay plugged into them and what they've done to you, then they determine who you are. Where if you plug into your heart and you stay curious about your feelings and you choose who you want to be and how you want to show up and how you want to feel, then you can start thinking in those ways because it's those thoughts that actually gift you the ability to be who you want to be, right? Okay, now the third step is to have the power to relook at the situation and the big picture. And this really comes in handy because when you go back and you look at the big picture, you oftentimes get a broader perspective of the reality that's happened, right? So the, the first step and the second step really help you separate from the experience. And the third step really helps you examine how it's all moving and what part you play and how you want to move forward. So when you're doing this third step, there's three things that I want to remind you of. First, do not let your mind sneak in and think about them again. <laughs> it will be the tendency, especially if you haven't done the first two. 
um, on a regular basis, right? Don't make looking at the big picture an opportunity for you to focus back on them. Make sure you're really looking at the big picture. Um, number two is you want to look through the filter of grace. And grace is the act of kindness, consideration, and compassion. I want to make sure I get it right. Um, when you look through this filter, uh, you're able to gift yourself that filter of grace for yourself and for the per other person involved, right? And that's a really helpful tool when you're looking at the big picture. Now, the third thing is, is I want you to take capacity of heart into consideration. Your capacity of heart and their capacity of heart. And when I say capacity of heart, I mean your ability to emotionally and physically move with your, with your own thoughts and feelings and then move with the thoughts and feelings of the world around you. So again, remember that if someone's suffering, which we're all suffering a little bit, right? We all have old limiting beliefs that are holding us back. We are, we're all in, in this process of evolution. When those things have someone's capacity of heart bound, they don't have the ability to see higher cognitive thinking. They don't have the ability to see what's going on or take everyone's actions into consideration. So if they're working from a smaller limited capacity, then you have to understand that they may never be able to see what they did wrong to you. They may never be able to see what it, the true situation was for you. And that's okay. But seeing the big picture offers you the experience of understanding that. And the reality is, is that if you can sit in this experience and not react and not allow your mind to just hone in on the suffering and then let that shift who you are, but instead utilizing it, deepening yourself, deepening the connection to yourself, you're broadening your capacity. So when you look at the big picture and you go back and you see how it's all evolving and how it's all moving forward, this gives you the space to go, okay, so I really want them to have this kind of reaction to me. I want them to be able to see that they hurt me, to, to ask for forgiveness, to do, do X, Y, and Z so that I feel better. And you look at that big picture and you really see the big picture they may never have that ability. So don't set yourself up to fail. Don't set yourself up to get hurt again by asking someone to do something that's not in their capacity, right? So giving you that big picture really allows you to take it all in and figure out how you want to move forward and figure out where you are in relationship to them, to your own story, to your own capacity, and it gifts you that grace right? Okay. Now, step number four. Okay. Step number one was the power to shift your perspective. Step two is the power to determine who you are. Three is the power to relook at the big picture. And four is the power of forgiveness. Now, forgiveness can be tricky. Um, I like to think of forgiveness is, as the art of allowing. Uh, you do not have to forgive someone and tell them that you forgive them. You can forgive them for your own heart because that's really what forgiveness does. Forgiveness untethers you from their actions, untethers you from the suffering that they caused. And it's not as much about them. Again, if you look back over the big picture, they may never even be able to accept the, that they did something wrong, right? So you've got to be able to hold space for your own peace of mind, your own freedom, your own ability to be whole again. And a great way to do that is to forgive. Now, my favorite way to do this is to get yourself into a quiet place and close your eyes. And in your mind's eyes, visualize the other person. Now recognize that their humanity is what caused your suffering. Their divinity, their, the part of them, their higher soul, the part of them that is connected to source, didn't. 
but their humanity, their limiting beliefs, the things that they've picked up along the way, all of that, that created the limitation and the, fl the flustering within them or whatever that created this disruption in your life, that part is what hurt you. So when you're visualizing them, make sure that their humanity takes the backside and that their divinity is what is in front of you. And step up to them. Now recognize that you get to animate them. They do not animate themselves in this scenario, in this picture. So allow yourself to feel safe and secure and go up to them and give them a heart to heart hug, right? And hold that embrace. And as you do, tell them that you forgive them for any pain and suffering that they may have caused you, whether it was known or unknown, and that you release them to be whoever they're going to be in the world. And then after a couple moments, forgive yourself for any part that you may have taken in the experience, right? And release yourself to be free of it. And to be able to move and be who you need to be in the world. And then hold that space for as long as you need to until you feel that negative cord release. And then step back and create ownership for the space of possibility that you've gifted yourself. The freedom that you have offered yourself, right? And then remember, you do not have to say anything to that person. You do not have to tell them anything. This forgiveness practice is for you and for your heart and for your story, right? So as you step through each of these steps of power, places to focus where you have power, remember that you can do them a thousand times a day. You are on a mental, emotional journey, and you can consciously keep shifting back. You can consciously keep picking up your positive cellular memories or your, your places of joy, or you can breathe as many times as you need to, to unplug, you know, visualize it, unplug from them, plug back into yourself. Give yourself the ability to create space for your own freedom. I know it's scary at first because your brain, it just, it wants to validate, but it's way more valuable to validate yourself, to validate your own joy, your own possibility, your own ability to create power within your own space, right? So I hope that these tools help. I hope that, that you can utilize them. I have a million examples I could give, but I try to keep these videos as short and tight as possible. So if you have a question, please leave it in the comments. You know that I love replying to your comments and I will give you as many examples as possible. And if there's enough in one area, I'll just create a whole nother video and walk you through tons of examples. Um, I want you to know that you can do this. I want you to know that if I can do this, which I've done a many, many, many times for small things like friendships or arguments with my husband or friends who accidentally or on purpose in their own survival kind of treat me wrong to my relationship with my mom, one of the fundamental relationships in my life, I had to do this in many different layers over many different periods of time in my life. And I'm telling you, these, these four things are game changers for you. And it's your story that I want to make sure you get to elevate. It's your story that I want to make sure you get to have where you're thriving. So write the comments, tell me what you need. I'm happy to help in any way, shape or form that I can. I will link the other videos into the comments below as well so that you have some supplemental things. You can always go to Awakening to Your Story. That link for the blog post that goes with this video will be in the description as well. There's so much more in-depth um, stuff going on over on the blog. I 
am so, so, so grateful that you are who you are and that you sit at the table of humanity so close to me. And if there's anything that I can do to help, please let me know. But until next time, I want you to know that I am sending, holding a space for you filled with love. And I am sending you that love your way.